Hi, I'd like to speak about neutron stars and stellar black holes. And first, I'll be speaking about neutron stars, but both neutron stars and stellar mass black holes are the end products of the highest mass stars. Well, all of the stars above eight solar masses when at formation will uh, have a type two supernova and the lower uh, mass stars will, uh, after having a supernova, the remnant will be a neutron star. The highest mass stars we, uh, will form a black hole. And a black hole, simply put, is a star uh, or any kind of object for which the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. So no, light cannot escape. And nothing can go faster than light, so nothing can escape. So that's what a black hole is. So first, neutron stars. Here is a type 2 supernova remnant. It's about 2,000 years old. And we know that there is a neutron star there because we can see it. A black hole would not be seen if it had been formed in this event. And so uh, after 2,000 years, the material is flowing away, but the neutron star still is there remaining bright uh, because it's still very hot. And um, you might think about how big is a neutron star? Well, if we consider this is Sirius A, which is the brightest star in the sky, the, the sun, the size of the sun there in comparison, and the size of a white dwarf. This is Sirius B, the white dwarf. And uh, the white dwarf is about the size of Earth. Well, that is shown so that we can look and see the comparison to the size of the neutron star. We see that the neutron star uh, is much smaller than the white dwarf. In fact, the white dwarf is about 2,000 times smaller than the neutron star. And this uh, means that a neutron star is only well, typically maybe about 10 kilometers in diameter. So it's much smaller than the Earth, more like the size of, say, a mountain. The Crab Nebula, which is a supernova type two, has a pulsar. This is a neutron star that uh, is spinning very rapidly and sending out a beam of radiation and it pulses every time it spins and it's spinning very rapidly. This one here is spinning um, uh, once, I think uh, 30 times a second or so. And so the pulsar is seen the, down deep in the center of the remnant and this exploded in the year 1054 leaving a neutron star with a pulsar behind it. So pulsars can form only in the case of neutron stars. So here's a diagram just showing a neutron star. It's about 12 miles in diameter. The mass is about, well, uh, one and a half times the mass of the sun. It's got a liquid interior with mostly neutrons with some other particles. So. What is a neutron star made of? Well, mostly neutrons, that's pretty simple. And it's got a thin crust about a mile thick, and the gravity at the surface is, is extraordinarily high, enormously high. So it's uh, uh, possible to escape a neutron star, but it is difficult, very difficult. You would have to be moving at a substantial fraction of the speed of light. And after neutron stars are formed, they often become pulsars if they're spinning very rapidly. Then a beam of radiation, a beam of light can form out of each of the poles as it's spinning here. And this is created by an electric field and magnetic fields associated with the uh, spinning star. And so the beams of light are like here and as the star spins, maybe the beam of light will flash in the direction of Earth, and if so, we see a pulse of light, and this is why this is called a pulsar. 
and it's not pulsing in some way or vibrating, it's just spinning with these beams of light that periodically cross into our view. And so uh, this, as pulsars age, as neutron stars age after the supernova remnant, they, uh, after the supernova remnant escapes, we see just a star by itself. And here's a case where a neutron star is seen and uh, uh, doesn't have any, any supernova remnant around it. It's not part of a binary system. It's just still pretty hot and bright. And that star is dead star and it will fade away gradually over time. But it's already been a, quite a while. The supernova remnant has, has floated away and become part of the interstellar medium again. So as part of the recycling of material, all of the heavy elements made by the high mass star, we saw that the high mass star had made these onion skins of di different uh, layers of heavy elements up to an iron core. And then uh, those elements get distributed out into space. And during the supernova remnant um, uh, expansion, other elements are are created in uh, nuclear reactions. Uh, fu uh, fission takes place, and uh, and um, lots of elements are created in the process of the supernova itself. Not just the star, the that uh, was the precursor star. So the supernova provided lots of elements that we have here. Some of the rare elements like gold and silver and such we have on Earth, but in this case, the neutron star is left behind. A more super, a more recent supernova, and we don't know, uh, at least I don't know if this is a type, of, uh, if this is gonna form a, um, sorry, if this supernova formed a black hole or if it formed a neutron star, but it is called Tycho supernova because it was uh, discovered and are at least observed by Tycho Brahe. I think other people saw it uh, possibly before him. And, but he did write about it and study it. And so this was very bright. It could be seen during the day for a little while and in 1562. So it's about 450 or so years old and we can see still the ejected material flying out in all directions from it. So, uh, what if you have a black hole and it's nearby a star? This is a good way to find black holes. Black holes are invisible, and so a good way to find them is to see them in a binary system with a companion. The companion here is losing material. It's flowing around, forming an accretion disk around the black hole. Jets are emitted here from the black hole. Now this is the picture that we have in our mind, an artist's conception. This is the real picture we get from the data. But this is very important because this is x-ray data and this shows very, very high energy. Something's happening that's not just simply a star. Something's happening at a, that's extraordinarily hot. Millions of degrees more than even the temperature, roughly the temperature of the center of the sun, and, and that is the inner part of the disk here. And that inner part of the disk is a major X-ray source, and that's how we can tell that uh, something's happening. This isn't just a normal star orbiting around uh, a, a companion that we can't see, the companion we can't see it, but that we can see the accretion disk, because of the X-rays it emits. Okay, so we can see the X X-rays from the accretion disk. So why are black holes black? Well, simply put, we can think about the escape velocity formula. And this is the velocity that you need to escape any kind of object. And we could have the mass, of, we could have the Earth, for instance, the mass of the Earth the radius of the Earth. G is the universal constant of gravitation. And so we can think about the velocity you need to escape. The, um, 
for the earth, it's only some uh, tens of thousands of, of, of miles per hour, okay? Or uh, for the sun, it's not too different because even though the sun is much bigger, more more massive than the earth, it's also larger. So keep in mind that the velocity squared here depends on the mass and the radius. We don't have to worry about g here because it's a constant. So if we think about what makes an object difficult to escape from, we want an object that has a high mass but a small radius because if we divide by a small radius, we get a large velocity. So the way we could do that is to think about what is the radius for an object that light cannot escape. So we would put in the c, which is the symbol for the speed of light, and c squared here instead of v squared. So the speed of light uh, squared equals g m over r for some kind of object that would have an escape velocity equal to the speed of light. Well, to do this, we would have to, first we could solve for r, and this is called the Schwarzschild radius. And this would equal gm over c squared. So this radius will do, depend on the uh, mass of the star, but we can figure out what size, what would be that size for a star. And so we would want an object that has a very high mass, maybe like the sun or several times the mass of the sun, and a very small radius, something less than um, a few hundred kilometers, say to form a black hole. So that's uh, why black holes are black. Simply put, the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. So light cannot escape. And if light cannot escape, the object will appear black. And in addition, nothing can go faster than the speed of light. So nothing can escape. So anything, if we want to know something about material that's fallen into a black hole in the past, we have no information to be able to answer that. What kind of things, because that information has been lost by falling into the black hole. So that is neutron stars and black holes.